My name is Kenny Snow. I'm one of the pastors here at Community. And I, oh, thanks. I, I don't know if that's ever happened before. So glad to see you here this morning as we carry on in our sermon series, Heroes. Um, it's been a great sermon series. I've, I've been over in the chapel a lot. I'm glad that I got to speak a lot in this one because I love the, the superhero genre. And I'm, I'm glad that that's okay now. Like we've reached an age where in, in time where it's okay to be a geek and it's a, it's a valued thing. Where in high school, that was not my experience whatsoever. And that was kind of a, a, a secret thing of, of like, yeah, I like comic books and I like this kind of stuff. Um, when, when I was younger and I would read comic books, I remember in particular there was one about Batman. And it got to a page and it was kind of like, it was one of those pages, it wasn't really about the story, it was just about Batman in general. And Batman had a utility belt. And this page was like everything that went into his utility belt. The grappling hook, the batarang, the, the bat cuffs, like, you know, everything's got bat in front of it. The lock picks, I guess those are the bat picks, I don't know. And, you know, we, we get into the weird stuff like the, the famous shark repellent that's in there somehow. Uh, for those of you who remember Adam West and his Batman, those were in, in there in the utility belt. And I remember reading that and even, you know, when you read comic books or you watch the movies that are out about, about the superheroes and stuff, there's a suspension of disbelief that you got to go through where you say, okay, you know, I'm going to go into this. I'm going to go in believing that, uh, like for Superman, that there's this, uh, this guy that's supercharged by the sun. And so he's really strong and can shoot lasers out of his eyes and all that kind of stuff. But even reading on Batman's utility belt, you're like, I, I just can't buy it. I can't buy that all that stuff is crammed into his belt, but he can still run without it, like bouncing all around and, and letting every criminal everywhere know that he's coming. Everything's jingling and all that kind of stuff. But when we're talking about this, this hero's uh, sermon series, that's the thing that always came to mind for me was that that utility belt is so valuable for even for Batman, who has this mission to you know, rid the streets of Gotham of criminal, the criminal element, to bring vengeance for those who are the defenseless ones who have, who have suffered from criminals, that kind of thing. And, and when we watch him, we are like, yeah, that, that's a good thing. We, we should have more Batman around. We should... And that, that utility belt is what empowers that for him. That's what we're talking about. Uh, the, this sermon series went through it. It struck me that we're on a mission as well, you and I. And we're focusing this sermon series on the heroes that are in our church and, and what they're doing. You saw some of them, some of my heroes that were on the screen a little bit earlier, the ones that are back in the production booth and the ones that are on cameras here that every single week they're here to provide for the online campus and for you so that when I'm up here you get to see me up on the big screen as, as weird as that is for me you know that's a value for you that you can see those things more clearly that's what they provide and so they're heroes here at our church but the the awesome thing is and you may not be aware of this if we're all called to be those kind of heroes God also equips those heroes he, he gives them utilities he gives them a belt so to speak of, of tools to use and so today I want to talk about what, what's in your utility belt. You may not be aware that you're wearing one. You can't see it. You can't feel it. But if you have put your faith in Jesus, we're told in Scripture that God has provided you with utilities for you to use. And so I want to talk to you about some of those today because I think it's a really incredible thing. First of all, I need you to be aware that we are on a mission. That it's not just the pastors here or the staff here or the volunteers here at church that are on a mission Again, if you put your faith in Jesus, what we would call a Christian, if you're a Christian because you believe that Jesus died for your sins and paid for them and that you've been made right with God, then you are on a mission whether you're really aware of it or not. That Jesus, you see there on your notes in Acts 1.8, 1 he said to his disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That mission has come on from those disciples, the, the original 11 there, to come in, into our lives as disciples of Jesus. We follow in their footsteps and we follow in Jesus' footsteps. And he is sending us on a mission to tell everybody that we can about him. That's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. It's expanded a little bit. and We're going to talk about that in the upcoming weeks. But the, the big thing for you to understand is you're on a mission to tell everybody that you can, everybody that God gives you the opportunity to tell about about Jesus, about what he's done in your life, and about the impact that it's had. And the great thing about this, it, it, it's a, that's, if you let that sink in, that's a, that's a big calling. That's a big mission. But God doesn't just put you out there and say, well, good luck with that, you know? He says right there in that verse, you will receive power. 
when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And we know from what the Bible says that if you put your faith in Jesus, then the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and so you have power. And so we may watch these movies or read these comic books and say, man, these guys, they're, they're so powerful and very strong. You have been given supernatural power, so in a sense, you are superheroes going on a mission for God. That's the way I look at it, because that makes me excited. I, I like seeing it that way. I may be the only one here that likes that, but you are superheroes that are sent on a mission by God. Now, God prepares you for this mission, and he does it in three ways that we're going to run through pretty quick this morning. So hopefully, you, maybe if you write down a few of these things or, or take down a, a couple notes, in Colossians 3, 12 through, 12 through 15, we're told some really important stuff, and, and this, this scripture is really about your character. And what I want you to understand, very first and foremost, when God sends us on this mission, his primary concern for you is that he develops your character. That's how he equips you. Number one, he develops your character. Because your character is the foundation for every other thing you're going to do. You may have the most vibrant, amazing ministry that has ever been seen, ever been heard, ever has been accomplished on this earth. But if your character is not strong, if your character is not godly, one day you're going to fall and you're going to take that whole ministry with you. No matter what you've accomplished, everything will be tainted by what you've done, by your character being eroded and, and being lost. So first and foremost, God wants to equip you with character, and specifically with a character that looks like Jesus' character. And so in Colossians 3, 12 through 15, there in your notes, it says this, Since God chose you to be the holy people that he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So if we think about, you know, superheroes, we think about Batman, Superman, these kind of people, all the ones that are up on the board here, they are clothed, they, they have a uniform. What, what a lot of people say is their costume, but I think they prefer uniform. That just sounds a little, a little stronger. Their uniform signifies that they are about something. They're, they're on this mission, they're, they're here to accomplish something. Batman dresses like he does, so he blends in with the night, and, and he can sneak up on people and scare them to death because he's dressed like a bat. I, I never really got that part of it. I'm not real scared of bats. Maybe that's, part, maybe that's the thing. But criminals especially that have a phobia about bats are going to be scared when they see Batman. When Superman comes along, he wants to draw everybody's attention to him because he can take whatever gets thrown at him. He, he, can, he can take that on. So he's dressed brightly and he's dressed to attract that. You are clothed, you are uniformed for your mission. And what God wants to do is increase the things that you are clothing yourself with, the things that are on the list there, tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Now, you might look at that, that list and say, that sounds like the worst superhero ever. If my powers are patience and kindness and mercy, like if Batman showed up and he, out of his utility belt, he said, this is the batarang of mercy. That's just, that's not scary. That's not going to do anything. So, but here's the reality of that. That's fiction. And in that fiction, it, it doesn't change anything about this world. It doesn't affect this world at all. So those may sound like the worst thing ever, but these are the things that actually will change the world. Make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. When we clothe ourselves with God's grace in that way, when we clothe ourselves with his forgiveness, something extraordinary happens. Something that does change the world happens. One of my favorite stories about this is Corey Ten Boone. And you, you may be familiar with him, you, with her. You may remember her from um, back in history class at some point of talking about Nazi Germany, that this girl and her family were protecting Jews. They were protecting them and, and keeping them hidden. And one day when guards were around looking for the Jewish people that were hiding out in this way, a, a newborn child that they were hiding started to cry. And so they knew that they were hiding people, and they arrested Corey Ten Boom's whole family. And within days, her father was killed. Then eventually, her sister was killed in, con in the concentration camp where both she and Corey were. And just a few days later, uh, so it's, a, it's kind of a bittersweet thing, Corey was released. If her sister had lived a, few, a little bit longer, she would have been released too, maybe. But Corey was released from that. And then, you know, eventually the war was passed and Germany was left as it was and everybody was freed from these concentration camps that survived. But just such a horrible stain 
in, in hum, human history, right? That we look on and we say, there are things in this world that are so terrible that it should just never be forgiven. But Corey Ten Boom believed in Jesus. And so she went back, if you believe it, she went back to Germany and started to preach forgiveness to the German people. To walk around and saying, I know this terrible thing happened. I know a lot of you were involved in it. I want you to know that God can forgive you and he does willingly through Jesus and I forgive you too. And what an amazing, amazing tribute to what forgiveness does. But even more amazing, one day as she finished talking about this, giving this talk in a chapel, there was a man that approached her and said, I was one of the guards at a concentration camp that you were talking about. And I have since then put my faith in Jesus. I believe that he has forgiven me of what, he, what I've done. Which that right there is a tremendous statement about who Jesus is and what he forgives. But the most amazing thing is he said, will you forgive me? And he didn't remember her. He didn't know her in that mass of people that, that had been through and so many had died under, under his hands. But she remembered him. And she, she, inside she said she wrestled with herself. It, it, this just tore her apart. And her response mentally was, how can I forgive? How can I forgive this man who, who humiliated me, who I walked in front of in shame as I looked at my sister and she was skin and bones and we were both naked being paraded in front of all these people. How can I forgive? And she realized, because Jesus forgave me. That's it. Jesus forgave me, so I must forgive him. I have to. And so she said, I forgive you. And she said when she did that, that was the hardest thing she ever had to say, ever had to do. She took his hand and she said, I forgive you. This peace washed through her and it changed her. Now, I think it changed him tremendously too. But in that moment, it changed something in her completely. And so she said, when, when we forgive, we unlock a door and we set loose a prisoner and we find out that prisoner was us. We find out that prisoner was me when we lock ourselves up against bitterness. She also said, I we'll put a quote up on the screen here. She said that when God asks us to forgive, he gives us the power to do it. When God tells us to forgive our enemies, he gives along with the command, the love itself. You are powered in your utility belt, you are powered with forgiveness and love. And if we read on in Colossians, it keeps going, it says, above all, clothe yourselves with love. That love, the forgiving love, the, the love that doesn't look like anything else here, clothe yourselves with that love which binds us all together in perfect harmony. I love that binding us together because that's talking about us here today. That's talking about the church. We are bound up together. You may, you, this may be your very first week here and you may say, I don't know you. I've never met you before in my life. I, I know. I don't know a, a lot of you. I may see you coming in and out. I may not know your names, but we are bound together in the love of Jesus. It binds us together in perfect harmony, even when we disagree. Even we disagree about any number of things. Some of you here may think Batman is the best superhero ever, and I would disagree. And that's okay, because we're bound together in harmony. You can be wrong. That's fine. <laughs> Superman's actually the best superhero there is. So you're left to your own opinion. I still love you, and we're still bound together in harmony, and I'll even forgive you if you hurt my feelings and argue about it. It'll be fine. That peace that comes from Jesus rules our hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. What we're talking about here, this clothing ourselves with these things, patience, gentleness, kindness, going and forgiving people that have, that have hurt us deeply, doing something like Corey Ten Boone. Now, I don't think we'll ever, none of us will ever experience that level of forgiveness that was required of her that she stepped out and did because she believed in Jesus. But so many of us will have to forgive in very, very difficult ways. Ways that no one else here knows about. No one knows that you're struggling with bitterness and you've got that bound up in your heart. And it, it, we don't know about that. When you do that, you will do something more difficult than any superhero ever has to do. But that forgiveness will unlock something in you. It will empower you. And you'll be able to change your world because of the, the forgiveness that, that Jesus has and it, it, as it flows through you. And here's the reason you can do that. So if you're stuck in a place where you can't forgive, the reality of that is you, you don't really understand the grace that's been given to you. Because once you understand it, if you have put your faith in Jesus, 
If you say, Jesus, I understand that you died on the cross for my sins. You rose three days later. I want you to save me. I want you to wash away my sins. I want to be made right with you. That, that kind of line of belief, when that happens, all of your sins are washed away. Every single one of them. Forever and ever. And so when you stand in front of God, when, when you die and you stand in front of him, he looks at you and he sees someone perfect and holy. And that's hard for us to accept because we know us. I know me, and I know if I stand in front of God, I'm going to feel like a liar if I say, I'm holy, I'm good, I'm righteous. But see, Jesus has made me that way in the sight of God. And knowing that and knowing everything that he's stripped away from me, I can look at other people and I can say, I can forgive this because Jesus has forgiven me. C.S. Lewis said that this, we can forgive the unforgivable because Jesus has already forgiven the unforgivable in us. That changes the world. And that's something that you are equipped with as a Christian, as a believer, as a follower of Jesus. Number two for us this morning, God prepares you for this mission, one, by building your character, by, by building that up. Number two, by empowering your passion. He empowers your passion. Galatians 5, 16 through 17 says this. So I say, let the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the, spiritual na- the sinful nature wants. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. As we turn ourselves over to the Holy Spirit, it, he begins guiding our passions. He begins showing us the things that, that hurt in this world and, and how we can move to, to change those things. Last week we talked about convictions and how conviction causes us to move. Passion does the same thing. Passion about something causes us to move. I want to give you a couple examples this morning of, of people here in our church that, that their passion was so strong about something. Yesterday we had Maximum Impact Love, which you may or may not have heard about, but Maximum Impact Love came out of the passion of a man here at our church named Drew Sewell who saw an issue in Fulton County and said, here's an area that is crippled by poverty, by, um, by single parents that are just trying to make it, by prostitution, by crime, by all, any number of things, and I want to do something about it. God, what can I do? And God has led him to, to put on this, this massive organization where so many clothes and, and yesterday book bags were given away to students that are going back to school to provide for them in a way that their parents may not be able to provide for them. And this church is part of that. We, we had about 40, 50 volunteers yesterday who went, who are heroes in those people, people's lives because they are passionate to see an area of our, our state healed, changed, rescued, because that is our mission in Jesus to go and tell everyone about the hope that Jesus puts in us. And when we do that, it transforms communities. It, it changes things. And that's why that's the mission of this church, to transform communities through the, through the hope of Jesus Christ. And here you are. I want you to know that you have a passion that you may not have found yet, but I believe that God empowers that passion in us. It can come about a few different ways. One of those is to see a need. One of those is to see something. This needs to change. And maybe you've had that overwhelming sense and seen something that hurt you so deeply inside. Maybe it wasn't done directly to you, but it was done to a friend or a family member. Whatever it was, whatever injustice it was, and something moved inside of you and said, no, no, this has to stop, this has to change. That's one way, that's one passion. Maybe you saw a need like these students that needed backpacks and and Drew Sewell's organization says, this is a need that we we can change, we can move in, and I'm gonna be passionate about collecting book bags and giving them away. I don't know what your passion is. I know what mine is. I believe, and I I am impassioned about the church. And yes, specifically this church, this this is one of the reasons that I work here, but I believe that the church as a whole, the church of Christians all the way around the world is God's plan for providing hope in this world. I believe that. I believe that we together are that church and that we can go out and we can change the things that we see are wrong in this world. And I believe that so much that it it fuels really everything that I do. Everything that I think about and and the books that I read and the videos I watch, so many of them are based, are about the church and the power that love and forgiveness have as we go out as a people. So we go out and you look back at Colossians 3, 12. God chose you to be the holy people that he loves. 
That is an empowering thing to me, that as a church, we are chosen as the holy people who God loves and who God sends out. And so that's what I'm passionate about. I don't know what it is for you. It could be any number of things because we're told that we're all here to bind in each other in love and to provide for each other's needs. I want to show you a video uh, from Melissa Escalante and her experience with people here at this church who have a passion about a certain area. Let's go ahead and show that video. Hi, my name is Melissa Escalante and I've been a member here at Community for a little over four years. One of the ministries that's near and dear to my heart is the caring ministry, especially recently as it has been just an amazing uh, source of support for myself and for my family. Recently, my grandmother had spent a lot of time in the hospital, um, later moved to hospice and passed away um, late in June. Um, Basically, um, the experience I have with the caring ministry just started with simply asking people for prayer. Um, whether it was just people that I knew um, through service or people that I served with through the children's ministry, I'm just really seeking prayer and it just kind of went out from there. Um, before I knew it, I was getting phone calls and my grandmother was getting visits in the hospital. Um, it just, it was again just really um, impactful to us. Uh, when you're dealing with a situation like that, a lot of times people go to prayer as the last resort when really it should be you're the first step, the first thing you go to, not the last thing. Um, so for us, just people coming to visit, pastors, um, other church members that my grandmother had never even met. She had been coming and visiting community with us for probably close to a year. And one of the things that she said in the hospital was just simply that she was shocked that people she didn't even know, people that she had never even met, took the time out of their day to come and see her, and not just to come and visit with her, but also um, to be there as support for her family, uh, my mom, myself, my children. Um, it just really has meant a lot to our family. We've had people volunteer to bring meals, um, in which they did bring meals to the family, uh, help take care of my children, just really step up and be there in any way that they could. Um, there was kind of like no limit, just let us know what we can do. If you've ever thought about getting involved in a ministry and you don't know where to start, I would suggest the caring ministry. Um, it's something that you might think initially is a little weird or awkward, going to visit people in the hospital that you don't know or calling them on the phone, but it's really a very easy way that you can make a huge impact on other people's lives. So glad she, she was able to share that. Let's, yeah, let's give the people, the hospitality team, a big hand. Um, if you've ever been in the hospital for an extended stay at all or had a family member do that, you know the, just the sheer monotony interrupted by a doctor or a nurse to come in for five minutes and check your vitals every once in a while and to, to compare your face to the chart and see how much you know, pain you're in. That is a frustrating and sad experience but then in through the door comes someone from your church who says, hey, I know we don't know each other real well, but we are, we are bound together by the love of Jesus. And so I'm here to pray with you. I'm here to spend some time with you. Um, I'm here to, to bring you a crossword puzzle or, or the newspaper or whatever, you know, something to alleviate the frustration that you're in. When that happens, that changes that person's day. That all of a sudden, it, and here's what I've seen so often doing this. You, you go in and you pray with somebody and they're so grateful to see just a, a friendly face. And a nurse comes in, and you might feel for a second like, oh, um, you know, I don't want to get in the way of the nurse, and, and they're doing things, and by all means, don't get in the way of the nurse. They're, they're, they're doing important things. But when a nurse comes in and you're praying with somebody, the reaction to that is just so very amazing that the, the vast majority of nurses and doctors, one, are so respectful of that, but appreciate it, and so many in our area will join in, and they'll, they'll stand there and they'll pray along with you. The impact that that has is unmeasurable. But I believe in it. I believe that that changes people and it gives hope and it transforms a community that's in a hospital. So if that's something that draws you, maybe that's an area of passion you have. Maybe you've had a family member or maybe you've been in the hospital for a while and you think, man, I would love to go around and, and cheer people up because I know how frustrating it is to be stuck. Maybe you could talk to, we have um, Sandy out at the floating table this morning. She's there to talk to you about any kind of hospitality that you want to be involved in or being involved in the out team as well. 
Um, but we would love for you to be involved in that if that's an area of passion for you. I know, like Melissa said, it feels super awkward. The first time you do it, it's like, ah, uh, just you're at the door and you're at the doorknob and you're like, why would this person care? Why would this person want to see me? They're going to look up and they're expecting a doctor and their face is probably going to fall because it's just some guy or some woman there to see them. It's completely the opposite. You walk in and you say, hey, I got a church with you and I love you and I want to pray with you. And their response is tremendous every time. So I just want to encourage you, if that's something that draws you, get involved in that. We would love to have you involved in visiting people in the hospital. Number three for us this morning, God equips us in our mini- or for our mission by equipping you with abilities. He equips us with abilities. And that sounds like a weird thing. It sounds like, you know, um, you've encountered some radiation and instead of you know, causing cancer like it does in the real world, somehow you're suddenly, you've got superpowers, that kind of thing. That's not exactly it. But remember back in Acts 1.8, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, he gives us power. He empowers us. And the way he does that is with certain abilities. If you look there in Ephesians 4.15, Paul says, We will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. That's the putting on. That's the putting on gentleness and kindness and patience. Growing more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. And as each part does its own special work, it helps the others grow so that the whole body is, is healthy and growing and full of love. Romans 12, 5 through 7 says, Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. I love this idea because as I, as I look at the church and the needs of the church, I'm only good at so many things. Honestly, my, my, uh, my fit is back in that dark room and, and pushing buttons and like Dave was saying, it's like watch, playing a game and watching TV. It's a fun thing to me and that's where I kind of thrive and I enjoy. That's one of my areas. And I look at all the other areas of the, in the need of the church and I say, I, I'm not really good at a lot of those things. But a lot of you are. And the reason I know that, even maybe not without knowing you, is because God said he designed us that way. This church, the holy people that God has chosen to love, he also empowered to fit together perfectly so that each part benefits the other parts. Each part works better because of the other parts that are working. And what a valuable thing that is. I want to show you one of my, one of my volunteers. I, I love this guy and love his heart for, for ministry and what he does. Um, this is Jeff Foster. Let's go ahead and, and play his video. Hi, my name is Jeff Foster, and I've been coming to community for about four years now. I was born and raised in, in a small church, and when I come to community, it was very intimidating. It was a large church, large congregation, two separate services. But I discovered that the key to surviving in a large church is to be involved in a small group. Um, I was introduced to Pastor Kenny Snow and the online team the very first day I was here. And ever since, I have been there. We uh, work behind the scenes. We do the online services. Uh, You see behind the scenes on throwback night. You see behind the scenes when Kirk Cameron was here. Uh, Just all the special shows and the special events that are here at church, you you actually get to be there before every, every, everybody else is there. It's just, the way that I look at it is that it's a great way to serve. You're, you're around a certain amount of people and you just, you just have fun with it. I mean, you just do it and you just have fun with it and you serve a lot of people and, you, and more importantly, you serve the Lord and that's the way that you, you, you can do it. So if you are looking for a way to, to fit in small into a big church, I highly recommend joining a small g- group. Uh, online is always looking, looking for somebody. So if, so if you're good running, running a camera, a soundboard, or, a, or even directing a service, please come and see us. Uh, uh, Kathy brought Jeff along uh, as her boyfriend at the time and introduced her to me. And, and the, the fateful thing that was said was, he's run cameras before. And like, oh, dibs. Like, I, you know, this is, I, I want this volunteer. I want this guy. So we showed him around in the, in the 
Booth, and like he said, he's, he's not left since, and they're married now, and they serve together in that ministry. God has equipped them and the rest of the production team with, with an enjoyment and an understanding of what happens when I push this button, what happens when I do this and that. And like I said earlier in the video, it, it's not really that it's complicated, but there's a certain ability and a certain joy that comes with playing with those kind of toys and, and doing those kind of things. And I, I do call them toys. I, I get to do little plugs for my ministry since I'm here today. We have, we have this awesome toy. This is a, how we control one of the cameras. And so if I touch on this screen, it, it moves the camera to me and I can control where it goes. I'm not as good at it as some of the other guys. But um, we can move and change where the camera goes. And this is the thing that some of you have been equipped, and I hope you don't take this the wrong way, you've been equipped with some money. And so some of you, got, you gave your money to the online campus, and we were able to get some really neat stuff. Now you're looking at my legs. That's awkward. <laughs> Still looking down there. No. What is going on? All right, well, like I said, I'm not as good as some of the other guys. We can switch back to one of the other cameras when somebody knows, knows what they're doing, apparently. But we get to play with some really neat stuff because of donations of people that were equipped to give. And we're so thankful for that because our, our ministry is able to go online and, and, like Dave said earlier, worldwide because of, of what some of you are doing without even knowing it, without being involved. But we'd like for you to take that next step. We'd like for you to get involved a little bit more. And here's why. If you come here and you call this church your home, you're here most weeks, you, you come and you sit and you enjoy the worship and you enjoy the speaking, you walk out of here encouraged or, or you know, however you feel leaving here, but you call this place your home, but you're not serving somewhere. The rest of the body is suffering from that lack. The le- some, somewhere along the way, there's a, there's a leg of somebody that has entropy because you're not there serving and using what God has equipped you to do to help out. Somewhere, some way, you know, there's somebody that, in the church where they need their hip replaced because the the part is just worn out because they're working so hard because they're missing out on someone that is equipped to help them because they're not serving yet. I would love to encourage you this morning, whatever your giftedness is, whatever place you think you might be able to serve and fit, that you would do that and prevent some of our parts from being worn out and some of our parts from entropy. We have uh, one of our great servant leaders here uh, is James Kane, And that guy has had more parts replaced in him than anybody else in it, like a bionic man. And he would tell you how hard that is to have a part wear out and be replaced. Uh, James, I hope you're okay with me using you. I should have talked to you about before that. But he's just recovering from a, a pretty major surgery where some stuff got replaced. And we're praying for his healing and, and that process. But understand In the church, it's the same way that we have parts that just get worn from from a daily use that we need need you, whoever you are, we need you so that we can accomplish the mission that Community Bible is about of transforming communities through hope. And without you, we are suffering a lack. I know you may not see it that way. You may just say, oh, I'm just some, some average person. I don't really know of any giftedness that I have or anything that I'm really good at. What we're asking you to do is, is think about that and pray about that and ask God. And here, it's a dangerous prayer in, in some sense. God is going to require you to change if you pray, God, show me where I can serve in the church. You're going to have to change your schedule. You're going to have to change your pattern. You're going to have to suffer and sacrifice some things because God wants you to serve somewhere. But on the flip side of that, you're going to find somewhere that you're passionate about, where you can change other people, where you can provide hope for other people, where other people will learn about Jesus. And that's your mission. That's your mission in this world and in this church. So my prayer for you today is in that utility belt, you'll start to explore and find out some things that are in there. Like, oh, I didn't know God put that in there. That's so cool. We want to be able to use that. We want to provide you this morning with a couple of tools to to enable this. Um, One of them, we have this um, volunteer opportunities uh, booklet that's floating around. There's some here in the back of the room. There's some in in the welcome room. There's some out in the table in the middle of the atrium. We would love for you to check this out and see if there's somewhere in here that that maybe you would fit. If if you're good at pushing buttons and playing with electronic toys and all those things, I I call dibs on you. I would love to have you in in my ministry. But if you're good at greeting people and you want to meet people every day, maybe you could be in the red carpet team and and be a part of a team that, that joyously welcomes people as they come in because they're coming into God's people. And they want to introduce them to Jesus from the very get-go, that Jesus wants you here and Jesus loves you and he's glad that he's here, that you're here. 
Maybe you could want to serve in any number of other ones here, but there, there's opportunities that you, need, you can serve, and we want you to serve in those things. We miss you. We miss your lack, and we would love for you to be a part of that. I hope today that you see that God has designed you for something greater than just attending church. That's fine. It's fine while, you know, while you're growing and while God is equipping and he's building your character. Maybe you're join, joining a small group where you're being built up in that way. But once God empowers your passions, once you, he equips you with abilities and you start noticing those things, find where God wants you to be. Find where he wants you to serve. Don't sit here for years and years and say, I'm not ready yet, I'm not ready yet, I'm not ready yet. Ask God if you're ready. Ask him if he's ready for you to move. And I, I just have the belief that he'll say, yes. Let me empower your passion. Let me, let me give you abilities that fit the character that I've already been building in you. Let's put on your uniform of gentleness, patience, kindness, and hope and go out and, and save a dying world. Save a dying people. Save a dying county. Save a dying city. Because we believe in Jesus and we believe in the forgiveness that he gives and he, we believe in the hope that that provides. And Romans tells us that that hope will never disappoint us. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for all that you do and all that you empower us to do. We thank you that we're called on this great mission that, that is very exciting and scary at the same time. I pray for those of us who have doubts who worry about their place, who, who might think that they're not good enough or um, skilled enough, and that you would move in their hearts and draw them to serve in the place that you want them to serve. We thank you for the great love and forgiveness that you provided for us. And I pray for anyone that doesn't know you, that they will be drawn to you so strongly today, that they will encounter that great forgiveness and love, and that they will be changed forever. We thank you for all that you do, and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Uh, thanks. <laughs> so we'll take the offering here in a minute. Before we do, we have a couple of quick announcements. Um, today, we, a, another way for you to serve here and a way to be a real hero at this church in particular is to lead a small group. If you've been in a small group for a while and you feel like you're ready to, to step out and, and just um, take charge of a group of your own, that may absolutely terrify you. But I got good news for you. We've got training to help equip you with those abilities and, and that leadership skill. We've got videos to help you and curriculum to help you as you form a, a Bible study. And most of all, the people that are going to be in your group love you and they want to be a part of your group. And so they're not going to care if you mess up one Sunday or whatever, whatever fear it is in your head. They just want to be with you and they want to be loved by you. So if you're willing to be a group leader, we'd love to have you involved. If you're not in a group yet, we would love for you to be in a group. All you have to do is fill out on, on that response card there today. Just put in, love to be a group leader or, or love to be in a group, and we'll get you set up. We have the men's Bible study coming up uh, August 7th. It's starting back up again. I think July was taken off. So August 7th, be there for the men's Bible study. That information is there for you in the bulletin. Um, we have the Global Leadership Summit. If you'd like to work on some leadership skills, maybe you want to you lead a small group and you're a little unsure on being a leader at all, come to the Leadership Summit. The, the uh, form is there for you in your bulletin or out in the, in the atrium. We'd love for you to do that. Uh, we have a new member lunch coming up August 13th. This is really exciting. This is for people who you've been here for a while, you've seen how we do things, you like it here, and you want, you're like, you know what? This is my family. This is my church home. I want to be a member. I want to join in the vision. I want to change my community. Come to the new member lunch. We give you a little bit of the background of the church. We give you information about what's going on right now. Maybe if you're one of the ones that have been hanging around for a really long time and you think to yourself, you know, I'm not really sure that I am a member. I, th I think I might be. That's kind of the, the way we operate here sometimes. We'd love for you to come anyway. Even if you've been here for 10, 13, 15 years, come to the new member lunch, enjoy lunch on us, and we want to provide you with some great information. Uh, finally, we have group link coming up on August 20th where we'll be um, in, empowering and equipping some of our small groups. If you are looking for a small group, that's the place to be. Go ahead and mark on your calendar. This is the way to, to find a group. Put in your response card. I want to be on group link, and we'll go ahead and start working with you on what group would be a good fit for you. If you're a group leader, this is where we really need you. We'd love for you to be a part of that and to um, make some new groups around here at Community. We're going to go ahead and take the, the offering now and, and have our time of giving and worship. 
We do love to give here because what God has given us. So I'm going to pray for the offering here in a second. If you're a visitor here, this is your first time, please don't worry about this. Don't feel weird or obligated by the plate passing by. Just let that go on by. Don't let that bother you a bit. But family members of, of community, really, I'm so thankful for your generosity in so many ways. Not only how it's impacted my ministry in the last few years, where we've, we've advanced tremendously in the technology we have access to, but for things like Maximum Impact Love, um, those things are, are such a, a powerful testament to how generous this, this body of believers is, and I'm thankful to serve with you every single week. Let's pray and ask God to bless the offering. Father, we thank you for all that you do and all that you provide. We ask that as this offering goes out to do your will and your ministry, that so many people will come to know you, they'll be drawn to your great name, and it'll be from our generosity, but it's ultimately from yours. We pray that however we can give, we will, both today and throughout the week of our time, our energy, our resources, whatever you've provided us. We pray these things in your name. Amen.